Good evening. Uh, my name is Father Ed Nadalny from the Father Nadalny Good News Fund. And I have a very special guest, guest tonight, and that guest is you. All you have to do is call me at 860-321-7405. That's 860-321-7405. And the first person who calls me, I'll take him out to have a grinder after the show or some other time. So here's your chance to get a free meal from Father Ed. 860-321-7405. There are lots of things to talk about tonight, and uh, I would like to really spend some time with you. There are all kinds of topics. We can talk about politics. We can talk about impeaching the, uh, the president. And I was very upset about the baseball game a couple of days ago uh, what, in Washington. And when the president came, they started singing or yelling, impeach him, impeach him. And how do you feel about that? Uh, here's a public uh, uh, baseball game, a time to celebrate and enjoy a game, and they're yelling, impeach. Now, the only one who can really impeach is the Congress. Uh, the House of, uh, House of Representatives can turn around and uh, accuse or not accuse. And that's their job, to accuse him or not excuse. But the Senate has to come down either to acquit him or convict him. So those two houses have to do, one has to do the accusing or not accusing him, and then the Senate has to acquit him and say no, or convict him, yes. But here we have a baseball team a scream, a screaming, uh, impeach him, impeach him. So I'd like to hear from you, how do you feel about the fact that uh, here is a, a baseball game, and we turn around and we find that uh, people are yelling impeach. So give me a, give me a call at 860-321-7405. How do you feel about impeachment? How, should we start yelling at baseball games to impeach a president? I, uh, I remember uh, Jeter who was wait, uh, uh, playing for the Yankees. Bush was thrown out to baseball, and Jeter said to him, don't dump the... Uh, uh, don't throw the ball on the ground or people will start booing. And he turned around and started smiling and he, he threw the ball in. So if you, uh, if you still, our lights are going on and are going off, so I, I hope we're still on the air. But uh, if you have a question, call me at 860-321-7405. And there are a lot of things I'd like to talk about. And uh, I got this book, it's called Starving for Years starving for years. And uh, it's about, uh, written by uh, a psychiatrist, from panic to peace and ten, 10 easy steps. There are so many people today who are really overcome with panic and anxiety and fear. And this is a very uh, interesting book. So I asked one of my listeners to call in about 7.15 and uh, would like to talk about some of the chapters and take out a few of the phrases from each chapter, maybe be, uh, help you. Now, do you ever panic? Uh, are you ang anxious? Uh, do you worry? Can you not sleep? I think there's a connection between both. There is a psychiatrist who was on the radio a couple of days ago, and he was talking about the trauma of, the, of children in the inner city. That one fellow saw his three-year-old three sister get uh, shot and killed and the trauma that affected him for the rest of his life. Uh, there are so many kids, uh, like what we've had, six or seven uh, teenagers killed when they stole a car and ended up getting killed. So just imagine the brothers and sisters of those kids. Just imagine the fathers and mothers of those kids, how they must, the post-traumatic, we're talking about soldiers coming from the service with their post-traumatic stress but what about what's going on in cities? What's going on in homes? When you know that one out of three girls are abused in family life, and one out of five boys are abused in family life, and what kind of stress those young children growing up as an adult? Uh, many times when I'm hearing confessions, the first thing I ask them, is there anybody in your life you need to forgive? And oftentimes, remember, one out of three girls in family life, oftentimes in confession, 
uh, tears start falling down, coming down their eye, uh, cheeks, because somebody abused them. I remember last two, a uh, mother told me her husband abused a daughter, and uh, another one, her husband abused a daughter. Now, how do you feel th those kids feel uh, as they grow up? So the anxiety, the fear, the worry, the depression that's going on in so many fe families' lives today. And uh, I know the psychiatrist on WDRC was talking about how it's most important uh, that young people have a relationship with an el older p person. You need to have relationships to handle your anxiety and your fears. And the, you know, the obvious point is, if you have a relationship with God, if you have a relationship with Jesus, then it's going to be that much easier uh, to live your, the trauma that you're going through, whether it's been an abuse or an abortion or whatever it may be. So if, uh, if you're looking at uh, people's lives today with all the anxiety that they have, you can't help worrying about their anxiety, their fears, their depression, their low self-esteem. So if you have a comment on that, call me at 860-321-7405. And if you had an anxiety, have you, are you worried? Are you panic attacks? Or whatever happens, I'm, I'm going to ask somebody to come in and summarize this book, Starving Your Fears, From Panic to Peace in 10 Easy Steps. So if you have an opportunity uh, on this topic, just give me a call at 203 Oh, no, 860-860-321-7405. 860-321-7405. And the other things I'd like to talk about are not only how do you feel about impeachment, but I've got a billboard that's, uh, I have a 91 going north off of Jennings Road, a new one I just put up. I have one on Route 9 here. I love you, Mary, and Jesus, forgive me or have mercy on me. But I'm getting a lot of calls from that because I have one picture, just Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. -S. That's all I have is Jesus. And my name, a little name, and my telephone number. And people are calling me, and it's phenomenal. Like just on my way here tonight, I was coming before I bought some pizza, I got a call from a lady who saw my, my billboard, and she was very, very upset. And I said, oh, what's wrong? And she says, I, I just got a, uh, a notice that I have to leave work. And she's a teacher's assistant, uh, supposedly a boy, a mentally, deploy, a mentally de deranged child, uh, told and said that he got the bruise from the, a, a, an assistant teacher. And he just came to school Monday morning, and he said he got an abuse. Obviously, he got it at home. But the, the assistant to the teacher was very upset because they gave her time off, maybe permanently. So she called up, and we just talked for about 20 minutes coming into the uh, studio tonight, uh, telling me what she's going through. She's afraid of losing her job, talking about panic, anxiety, and depression. And uh, will she lose her job? Uh, but the, the black and blue mark was there before he, he came to school. Uh, but he got mad at the teacher and blamed him. And I remember I had the same thing happen to another teacher. The boy came in with a, blue, a black and blue mark and blamed the teacher. And before you know it, the teacher was there for 11 years. She got fired. And the grandmother is the one who abused the, teach, uh, the child. So we have a lot of uh, reasons to panic, a lot of reasons to be concerned, a lot of reasons to be depressed. So if you have a question, call me at 860 321 7405. That's 860-321-7405. Then another, another call I got uh, from that bill, same billboard uh, was a call about a woman who was uh, very depressed uh, because uh, her husband uh, uh, committed adultery, and uh, she just found out. And she called me and was very, very upset about the fact that the husband uh, committed adultery. And, she was just shattered after so many years of marriage. And I think that happens so often in marriage. So sin causes uh, depression. Sin causes anxiety. Sin causes all these uh, different emotional, psychological, uh, and um, 
emotional uh, trauma in people's life. And have that, has that ever happened to you? Has sin caused trauma, or does cause guilt? Maybe on a, not only on a person who committed the sin, but on uh, family members who said, what, do I, what did I do? And I, I know it takes two to tangle. So I told this man that uh, uh, this woman whose husband committed adultery uh, that, uh, you know, it takes two to tangle. So he did something wrong, but how did you contribute to it? And not justified. But when there's no, a lack of communication, then you can see a, a lot of times of adultery or you become married singles when you don't have the communication. And that causes stress. That causes panic. That causes all kinds of things. And uh, the lady who got in a car accident, it wasn't her fault. And uh, she called me today. That was another example of somebody who uh, was hit by a hit and run driver. They found the car and the, and the boy said the car was stolen. Now she's done uh, physically. Uh, his, her head was hurt or her body was shattered. And she had a wonderful job. And now she's out of work and she's got migraine headaches because of a, an accident. So when we're talking about panic, will I be able to get to go to work? Anxiety, will I ever have a job again? Depression and uh, migraine headaches. So you have a lot of people who come under this uh, fears that come from all different sides. So you call me if you can, call me at 860-321-7405, all right? So we're talking about panic, worry, fears, anxiety, and depression. And what are some of the causes of it? And I remember uh, listening to a psychiatrist on radio, and he was talking about uh, relationships. You have to have adult relationships. But, you know, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, with whom do you have a relationship? And this is what gets me. Uh, people have fallen away from God, walked away from Jesus, and just figured, I'm my own God. And why are so many people depressed? Why are there so many suicides? Why are there so many homicides? Basically because you don't have a relationship with God. I say mass at uh, Walker uh, Prison in Suffield every Wednesday. I'll be going there this Wednesday. And when I listen to the fellas, and I'll see them, all of them belong there, but yet none of them belong there. And uh, when I asked them, seven out of 10 of you are going to come back into prison within five years, but three of you uh, are not gonna come back. So what's the difference? What keeps you from coming back? I know why people do come back. They go back to the environment, lack of education, they are drug addicts, they're selling drugs. There's all kinds of reasons why people come back and repeat uh, the same sins. But why don't, people, why don't the prisoners come back? And it's interesting to listen to them. Uh, one will ha talk about faith in God, a relationship with God. Another will talk about hope in God, a relationship with God. And another will talk about love for God because God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God. It's a miracle, it's, uh, to me it's a miracle that the way they'll stay out of job is by having a personal relationship with Christ. With faith, hope, and love, those are the three theological uh, virtues. And with those the theological virtues come penance, come help, and, et cetera. So if you can, uh, give me a call at 860-321-7405. Let's see, do I have a call here? No, I don't see a light. Yes, I do. Father Ed, you're on the air. Yes, hi, Father. Um, I'm surprised that you're here because I'm surprised that St. Luke's hasn't picked you up to go on the road with them to do their other productions. Well, what on, did you do with Tolson? Uh, what do we do? We had seven shows, and uh, every show was a tremendous success because the, uh, the, the actor, Jim Coleman, was a... A, pro, a professional actor. He worked on uh, Law and Order. He, he worked on uh, Nickelodeon. He worked on uh, uh, HBO. He did all kind of he did excellent, and everybody responded 
tremendously uh, well. In fact, I've got people uh, calling me and calling me, when's the next show? And I had altogether 15 shows. And of those shows, uh, there was a one that we didn't get a standing ovation. And it's a beautiful story about a slave who ha had no education. He was able to escape from Missouri, somehow his mother, and, and he tra traveled all the way up to Quincy, Illinois. He got a job in the factory, and the factory was uh, a cigar factory. Eventually, it wound his lungs, and he died at 43. And he started going to the Catholic Church, and he started bringing others to the Catholic Church, and the black ministers didn't like it, and the white uh, people didn't like it. So eventually, he went, uh, went to a, they started a, a black school there in Quincy, Illinois. And then one day, the pastor said, well, what, did you, what would you like to do? He said, well, I'd like to serve people. He said, what about becoming a priest? He said, me, a priest? Now, no, I'm a slave. I'm a Negro. They'll never take me. So they tried to get him into a seminary, and nobody would take him in the United States. So finally, he went to uh, Rome. And that's the time that he first, really first felt free, free from uh, any type of racism and hatred. So he got ordained, and he thought he was going to go back to uh, go to Africa because he was, he was black. But the uh, bishops, uh, the uh, cardinals said, no, you'll go back to Quincy, and you'll be the first black uh, priest in the United States. So he went back, and he drew uh, 500 uh, blacks to, and 1,000 whites to the church. And the white priests from other church were jealous, and the black ministers were jealous, and the white women and men that were in the parish, they hated him because he was bringing uh, blacks. So he started to get hated by everyone, the blacks, uh, ministers, and the uh, white priests, and the uh, white parishioners. So one day he came up to his pastor and said, you know, they're going to kill me. So uh, he went to Chicago, where there are 27,000 uh, slaves that came up from the South. That's why we have uh, the... Uh, so many blacks in Chicago today. And Trump made a comment about that today on, on television. And uh, so he, he worked. Uh, he started at St. Monica's Church, but he worked himself to death, and he dropped dead on the street. And uh, it, people can look at that black man in black clothes. He had uh, a cassock on. And now he's called venerable, uh, which means that there has been a, a, uh, a miracle on his part and we're praying for miracles. In fact, everywhere I, I go with the show, I have this special prayer asking people to pray for a miracle, a physical one, a spiritual one, emotional one, psychological one, or family one, whatever it may be. So it's an amazing story of a man who was so patient and so humble and ended up one of, really one of the greatest priests we've ever had in the United States. So we had 15 shows, and I'm planning now, just this, this today, I called 18 different places that I had shows, and I asked them to give me a comment on, uh, on the shows. And while you're here, let me, I just got two that came in. This came in from a, a group of kids at St. Rita's School in Hamden. These have what was written. The school, uh, the kids and the teacher. Inspiring performance. Interesting, creative, clever. Uh, one actor can tell the story. Well done, fascinating, educational. I was shocked by the prejudice even among priests. That came from the kids and the faculty at St. Rita's School. I'll read you another one. This came from a lady in Bloomfield who saw it. Thank you so much for sponsoring St. Luke's production of St. Father Augustine Tolson's Life. First class entertainment with a religious theme how refreshing. My husband and I attended the recent performance at Northwest Catholic High School in West Hartford and were spellbound. It was gripping, inspiring, honest in its depiction of a regrettable era of American history with a great message encouraging religious vocations. A soulful singing of Father Tolton's and Mama elevated the overall agency of the performance. As newcomers to Connecticut, we have noticed your name on large billboards always with a Christian message. We're happy to learn that you are still active in your ministry, reaching out to save souls. 
May God bless and multiply your selfless efforts at evangelization, appreciation, Gloria Van Syke uh, from Bluefield. That's one letter. Here's another one. This was written by a priest. I enjoy the Catholic art of event twice of Tolton, slave to, uh, to priest. It shows the power of a black mother and prayer and our Irish Catholic pastor. Now, th this one came from uh, uh, Bishop Rezaza. Tolton, I was deeply touched by Father Tolton's profound faith as, as he struggled against so much opposition and, uh, and persevered, following God's will faithfully, signed uh, Bishop Rezaza. These are some of the ones that came in already telling me about it. And you know, I think I would like to save this, but I want to make a, a kind of a, a promotional uh, envelope flyer uh, to put all these things down on, on one flyer and use it as a promotion. So that gives you a, an idea of uh, how wonderful, like 650 kids at uh, Xavier saw it. They stood up and gave a, a standing uh, vocation, location. Okay? Thanks for calling. No, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're on the air with Father Ed. Oh, good evening, Father Ed. This is Mary from Winstead. Yes, Mary. How are you? Uh, uh, good. I, I, I mentioned that people would be uh, calling about the book Starving Your Fears. And oh, from, yes. From Panic to Peace. Uh, and you read it. Could you give us just a short outline or maybe just summation from it? Uh, as you get a look at the, o the overall uh, picture of, uh, uh, of the, pic uh, the book, Starving Your Fears. Now, let me get my pencil because I'm not good. I can't, got no writing. Okay, what would be uh, one of them? One, uh, okay. Well, first, I, I'd just like to extend my sincere appreciation to Joyce Logan for such a beautifully written book. <laughs> it, 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 I've dealt with anxiety for as long as I can remember, and this book has helped me tremendously to help in situations um, where they've, you know, they've been anxiety-ridden situations, and I can just handle them in a more productive way. So I, I just want to say thank you to her for such a wonderful book. Is this Mary talking, or is this someone else? Wow. <laughs> well, okay. okay. Uh, I, I didn't expect okay. it. Well, first, um, first, I would just like to say, um, let's see. The first chapter starts right off with something so simple, and that's, um, you know, to change your, your thought process. And, and words can make a big difference, like simply changing the phrase, I'm worried, to I'm concerned, okay. makes, a, makes a whole, it makes a big difference. Okay, we'll stop just for there. Let me write down, change the word to, from worry to concern. Mm -hmm. and, and that must be, uh, you know, worry is uh, not the most natural thing in our lives. I worry about everything. You know, I worry about if anybody call me at the show. I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that. But you're saying instead of being worried, worry it shows things are not uh, in your control. Concern mentions that I am in concern, uh, in control. That's a good phrase. Worry shows that I'm not in control. Mm -hmm. And concern means that I'm in, con I'm in control of my situation. That's a wonderful phrase. I, I wish for anybody listening to that to remember that. Change the word worry to concern. And uh, I, you know, I worry, do I have, uh, 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 somebody just called me today and she's worried that she's going to lose her job because a uh, student accused her of, of uh, black and blue, which was absolutely a lie. So oh. she's, she's very, uh, very worried. Uh, and, but she's not concerned the fact that she's really in, uh, interested. So the worry has taken her off over her. That's why she called me. And, uh, and, and, and we talked for about 20 minutes as I was coming to the studio. Yeah, that is, how can you not worry but be concerned? But that would, that would lessen the anxiety, the fear, and the panic that's inside. Yeah, worry makes you panic. Concern makes you in control. Good. What else? Right. That's true. That's yeah. true. That was a very good point. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. Uh, anything else? Oh, yes. And then um, if you could just uh, learn to retrain your mind with positive thoughts and outcomes. Um, expect the best out of situations. Don't think of, and she said, don't think of them as anxiety-producing events. You know, expect the best out of situations. 
um, and I found that to be very useful as yeah, well. I think the bottles always half full instead of half empty. You know, have a right. have a positive outlook on life instead of uh, the negative. You know, I, I can get up and say, "Oh God, another day." <laughs> oh, oh God, thank you for the day. You know, you can look at it bo both ways, and uh, yeah, that's expect the best out of situations. You know, you say, "Oh, I'm." I'm not going to be good. I'm not going to be able to do it. I can't. I can't right. do it. And where you knock yourself down instead of building yourself up. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Good. And any other thing? Yeah. And also, just um, just along the lines of words again, that um, just changing the words in your vocabulary can really make um, situations seem more difficult than they really are and than they, that they really need to be. Like changing the word hard to challenging instead of hard and, and get rid of words out of your vocabulary like difficult and hard and stressful and painful. Just get rid of those words and, and replace them with more positive words and, and that really helps uh, situations to become less anxiety ridden. It, it really does. It's really helped me and I really appreciate everything that she's written. So you're saying learn to turn your mind with positive thoughts mm -hmm. and outcomes instead of ne negative ones. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I do that? Learn to return your mind's mind with positive thoughts and uh, uh, outcomes instead of negative ones. Yeah, you could uh, look like at changing that example from changing the word hard to challenging is right there in itself is makes the situation seem okay let me write that change the word hard to challenging yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That one. <laughs> uh, if you change the word from hard to challenging well it's too hard to do but then say this is it's a challenge like people find well i can't pray it's too hard to pray well look at it as a challenge to pray you know when i uh spend i try to spend a holy hour once a day if i can and it's hard to uh uh, spend an hour with the Lord uh, every day for an hour, but then you see the challenge. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. How could I stay stand stay still for one hour and just thinking of our Lord, praying to the Lord, or listening to the Lord? How could I do? That's too hard. But if you look at it as a challenge to do it, then then you want to do it. Doing hard says, well, I really don't want to do it. So it's a, a different attitude. When I say it's hard, what I really mean is I don't want to do it. But if I look at it as a challenge, that means, yes, I do want to do it. So those two words are very interesting. One hard means I don't really want to do it. Uh, challenging is I'm going to try and do it. So uh, that's great. And thank you very much for that insight. And it's a spiritual thing. Can I, it's too hard to pray. Like mm -hmm. I, I always say, busy means be under Satan's yoke. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm under Satan's yoke. Well, wh what does that mean? That, my priority is not God, it's not my priority friends, it's not prior my priority is not love, uh, but uh, my pr priority is something selfish. So w w it's whether we are challenging to make God your priority, but if I'm busy, then I, it's too hard to make God my priority. Uh, that's a good point. Okay, anything else? Mm -hmm. um, one other thing that I found um, very helpful is when faced with an uncomfortable situation uh, where you know you're going to face anxiety, she says to learn to say, so what, and big deal, big deal, you know, you'll get through this, or, or so what, you know, and, and I, I really liked that. Um, it re will retrain your body to relax by saying, instead of worrying about the situation, if you say, so what, or big deal, you can actually retrain your body to relax itself so you're not so you don't get the um the the physical sensations of that, an anxiety that, or a that, panic attack that an adrenaline that misfired yeah adre misfired adrenaline that, exactly I remember, I remember seeing, seeing that yeah but how can you do that when you're full of uh, afraid and anxiety and how can you say uh big deal well, I just add something that with your build, big deal, when you've got misfired anxiety, uh, a, a, a adrenaline, like you say, mm -hmm. uh, when I say, will I be upset about this a year from now? Or will I, uh, will be I worried about it a week from now? Uh -huh. And things that I'm afraid of right now, 
Uh, and uh, I'm anxious about, I really want people, I remember when I had my uh, operation on cancer uh, back before anybody was born, and uh, I was very anxious, like we talked about anxious, and very fearful. And uh, how do I uh, starve my fears? When, uh, it helped me, really, the doctor told me, you know, the cancer hasn't spread. So I said, well, if that's true, will I be afraid and anxious about this a, a year from now? or a week from now, and that helped me when I said, no, I won't be worried about this a year from now, so why should I be anxious about it now? So why make a big deal out of it? And uh, right. that, that helped me very much, uh, that big deal. So uh, it's, when you're afraid and anxious about something, when you really look at it, is it really a big deal that's causing this anxiety or, uh, uh, or, or this anxiety and uh, a fear that's inside of you. The book says, starving your fears. So you're giving me a lot of practical ways that I can starve my fears. And, and instead of saying, wow, I just say big deal. Okay, anything else? Right, you're starving the fear, you're not feeding it. And, yeah. and, and that's, that's oh, sh uh, another thing is she said, don't relive and retell negative experiences because that will only feed the anxiety, which is detrimental to your progress. So that's, that was a big, big one that stood out for me as well. Don't relive and retell your negative experiences. Yeah, and that's what we... Well, it just fuels it. Uh, yeah, well, we live in the past. You know, God's... I see I, the past is God's, God, God's history and left in God's mercy. But why is it that so many people uh, love to live in the past and they dwell in the past and the present moment is the one, only one that uh, exists? I don't have an answer to that. I don't know if you do, but I, I wonder why uh, so many people live in the past. Like I just had a, a case of uh, uh, adultery. Somebody called me up today and they were all very upset uh, because the, fa the husband had committed adultery. and. Uh, I'll never forget this, they said. I'll never forget it. And uh, so they're, they're going to dwell in the past forever, so they'll never live in the present moment. The, the, the past will be their present moment, and the present moment will never exist. But God is only in the present moment. He's in the past. But, you know, unless you get the grace to forgive, you're going to live in the past. I've got so many people who still hold grudges, who still are hurt, and they uh, refuse to let go of that hurt, let go of that uh, grudge, and let go of that anger. And so they live in the past, and you're saying uh, refuse to live in the past, but uh, try to uh, live in the present. If you live in the present, hey, uh, the past doesn't exist. In God's eyes, it, uh, it, he only lives in the present, because God says, I am who I am. Good. Anything else they got there? Well, you just touched on the next one I was going to, to mention was, you know, consciously focus on being at peace and stay in the present moment. So basically, you know, that's, that's what you just touched upon there. Yeah, why, you know, I don't know why, I'm not asking you to answer this, but I'm just talking out loud. I don't know why people love to live in the past. And uh, I could see remembering some a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful thing. To let go of, you know, some things are are difficult to let go of and you, you can't forget it, it's so I think and that just keeps you keep reliving it in your mind and it's hard to to let go sometimes of, of but is negative, it, negative experiences especially so yeah, yeah why uh, but you had said something uh, big deal big how can I say a big deal of something that happened in the past that was so ser serious you know that uh, what happened in the past doesn't exist but uh, uh, is it a big deal? No. It was 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, but it is it a big deal right now? So uh, you, like, like you're saying, only if you uh, live in the present moment can you handle that big deal. That's a good point. Now, one thing, uh, uh, now, uh, I, I, some, I got an aunt, she loves to worry. She loves to worry. And um, I think uh, this is what makes her feel important by uh, 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 it's uh, wearing, and she feels very important. So my question to you is, uh, what percentage of people uh, worry, and uh, what percentage never happens, the things that they're, wor they're worrying about? 
<laughs> okay, Joyce Logan, she says 90% of what we worry about never actually happens. So it, so it's a big waste of worry. It's, it, you know, it's... It, 90%. I, I agree with that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, uh, let's see, we can we cheer, we can, we can, I like the phrase, let go, let go, let God. And uh, have you got anything else before, I don't want to hold you up, I know you're uh, uh, maybe uh, making, <laughs> making slippers for somebody, but whatever. Uh, well, one thing that's good to remember is another thing that she pointed out is that feelings of anxiety, because they can be scary and they can make the situation even worse yeah. than they need to be. The feelings of anxiety, anxiety are just unpleasant, she describes. They're just unpleasant. They're not dangerous. So uh, some people whip themselves into a frenzy when they get into the, a panic attack. Mm. So it's a good thing to remember just to relax. It's an unpleasant sensation, but they're not dangerous. That's wonderful. Uh, is, you, is, it, is it true it's really Mary calling here today? I never expected such a wonderful conversation, and I want to thank you for calling. <laughs> and I was just a pleasantly surprised. That, uh, oh, well, thank you. I never would have done this without the book because I'm, I'm, you know, I've dealt with anxiety for my whole life. I've never talked on the television or radio in my whole life, in my first time. So I'm, I'm a little nervous, but I'm, you know, the book has greatly helped me. I, I I've got so much out of it. I, I highly recommend anybody with anxiety to read the book, um, the whole thing. I mean, I'm just highlight. We're highlighting, you know. Yeah. some strong points in the book, but yeah. the whole thing is very enjoyable. Good. It's, yeah. an, it's a very nice, easy read. It's enjoyable. I couldn't put it down. It, it was just, it yeah. helped me so much. Okay. So. Well, I think you better go back to making some slippers. And they, they, thank you very much for calling. And I'll, I'll, call, I'll call you later. Thank you, okay? <laughs> thank you, Father Ed. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Father Ed. Good evening, Father Ed. Hi, this is Kimberly. How are you? Oh, good. We've been talking about some I issues. Could you, could you just summarize some of the issues you have to share with us? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, well, briefly, um, I'll, you know, I'll reiterate on some of the things I, I spoke with you about. Um, but since May of 2019, um, Our Lady of Notre Dame de V, um, who is Our Lady of the Sacraments, has been gracing us with messages um, during our 1215 rosary. Um, she's requesting um, that we pray this rosary for the return of all our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters um, who have left because of lack of understanding of the sacred seals of the sacraments, but also um, from others who have led them astray. Um, she speaks out by the way of our sacred seals of the sacraments, which were instituted by God himself. None of these can be removed only by God himself and that is at the final hour of death, and you have to verbally reject them to God um, in order for these sacred seals to be removed. Um, while in prayer, um, during the rosary at the 1215 hour, um, white crosses have been appearing above St. Joseph's Church, um, as well as angels and symbols of the Trinity. Um, now Our Lady of Notre Dame, Davy, is requesting that we build her a sacred shrine of the sacraments and she's requesting that this be placed at Holy Land in Waterbury. And this is to honor the sacraments, um, and especially of baptism, um, which is, as she explained, her son being reborn in each child that receives the sacred seal. Um, she's asking that the baptisms take place on Christmas vigil um, to honor her son, and also before in the blessed um, the exposition of the blessed sacrament. The reason why she wants a manger placed in front of the shrine is she's asking that the children that are baptized on the Christmas vigil to be placed in where her son Christ, our Lord, um, was placed. And when they're placed in the manger, they're going to receive extraordinary graces by God. Um, it's extraordinary what we're receiving here. Um, and now, at, actually, at the Holy Land, it started last week, um, the cross up at Holy Land is illuminating in white light. Um, last time we were there, we saw a so 
silhouette of Our Lady, and she was actually on the cross with her son. So it's a beautiful um, analogy, you know, knowing that the white cross, which she said is already in place at that Holy Land, represents the triumph of our Lord. It's called the triumphant cross, and it is his triumph over the world um, in each one of us by the way of our sacred seals of the sacraments. And Our Lady is wearing a crown of seven white crosses, and each cross representing the sacred seals of the sacraments, but also each continent in the world. And our Lord speaks out, by our sacred seals of the sacraments, none of us will be lost. And he's telling us not to fear. And so is Our Lady of Notre Dame de Vie. Um, she first came about in the 1600s, and many of the children that were born, stillborn, they were brought back to life. And she would, um, during the Mass, they were. she asked that they baptize them and the children would actually come back to life and they would see the sacred seal of the baptism right and then they would fall to sleep like that of the angels and by doing this she was expressing the utmost importance of baptism which many of our children now these days are not being baptized and she speaks out because a lot of the denominations say that they have to wait until they have a greater understanding. But when these people pass away without the sacred seal of baptism, they are not going to heaven. And this is the scary part. But one of the things that she spoke of is a place of desolation, she states, where a lot of people are ending up. They've had the teachings of Christ but they did not receive the sacred seals of the sacraments in our church. Um, so this place of desolation, she's calling it Sheol, which is mentioned in the Bible, and it's a place of sand and darkness. And it's not purgatory. It's another level of, um, I would say, a step above being with Satan himself. Very horrible place. But by our prayers, the 1215 Rosary, she wants to fill the seats of heaven. And many of these people, she is stating, are being released into heaven. And she is been deemed by God to baptize them herself. So how powerful the prayers are at the 1215 hour, which a lot of people are now doing. Um, I'm asking everyone to please this is for the restoration of the church and to bring our brothers and sisters um, in Christ back to the Roman Catholic Church. Um, we are the only ones who have these sacred seals, and this has been established by Peter so, <laughs> and by God himself. Um, and she also speaks out that we need to, in order to receive, we must believe. Faith is so important having confidence in who we are in God and who we are in our Roman Catholic Church and to be proud of who we are because we still stand for the truth. Um, many of the walls are falling around, you know, down around us, but we need to be strong and, and fight the good fight. Okay. In okay. Remain. Okay. Thank you, Father. Oh, don't know. I hang up. I got one to my else on the line. But give me one thing that we all can do. Um, she's asking that everyone be consecrated to her Immaculate Heart, um, and she's also asking that we pray the 1215 Rosary. We are the only church in the world that is in one accord in prayer. <laughs> we're the only one. And that's why our prayers are so powerful, and we're able to do such things as moving people and souls from desolation into heaven or purgatory, wherever they're going, probably purgatory. But getting them out of these places where they do not belong because of false shepherding. We know that a lot of our, our Catholic brothers and sisters were led astray by people telling them they need to be saved. Okay, so you're saying, but you're saying saved? You are saved. You are saved by the sacraments of the church. You are saved. You are following the truth, and we need to remain. Okay, okay. okay we're saying, uh, consecrate the family to the sacred heart of Jesus and Mary. And also to say the rosary, three, uh, 1215. 
Nicotine Rosary. And please, if you can, go up to Holy Land and pray for this shrine. Um, many people are seeing the crosses illuminate. It's a white, the white crosses that are flashing okay. where the cross is. And you can actually see it from the highway. Okay. Not to take your eyes off the road. Please pay attention to your driving. But please, go there and pray for what Our Lady is requesting, that it be established. Okay, thank you very much for calling. God bless you. Father, and God bless you as well. We'll be in touch. Take care. Thank you, Father. Bye-bye. You're on the air with Father Ed. Hi, Father. It's Elaine. How are you? Good. Um, thank you for being patient. Okay, uh, no problem. Um, I have a question about um, Holy Days. Now, Friday, November 1st, is the Feast of All Saints. Right. And from what I can remember, most of the other holy days, um, holy days of obligation, are about either Mary or Jesus or the Holy Family. Why is All Saints a holy day? That's a good question. It shows the emphasis on the importance of uh, awareness of saints and the vocation that we all have to be called to sanctity. So it, what, we know we have the, the top ones, you know, the, the superstars, you know, the, the, we have the um, apostles, we got us in Javiani, we got St. Teresa, we got those superstars. But there are a lot of stars who are not superstars, and we're recognizing those saints. Now, to me, uh, I meet those saints all the time. You may laugh at me, but when I celebrate uh, Mass over at the um, uh, Walker Prison in uh, Southfield, I find a saint is a struggling sinner. So they're like, you, you had, uh, and these guys have sin, and they all are sinners, but they're str struggling sinners, and some of them are very, very holy. Uh, they pray the rosary, they watch the TV mass, uh, they read the scriptures, uh, they have a personal relationship with God. Uh, the saints that we're talking about today are those that you've met in your life, uh, your, your mother, your grandmother, uh, an uncle, an aunt, a co-worker, or somebody who looks uh, leads a very ordinary life in a very extraordinary way. And there are many of these. Un See, we got uh, St. John Vianney because the uh, bishops were pushing it. We hear of St. Jo uh, John Paul II, and everybody was pushing him. Uh, we hear of John the, tw uh, John the 23rd. We hear of St. Teresa of Calcutta. These are all heavy hitters, but they all have a tremendous number of people behind them uh, encouraging to look at their lives, look at the miracles. Like right, right now we have, uh, we've been talking about uh, Tol Augustine Tolton, uh, from slave to priest. He's had, ha has uh, a miracle behind him. But there are a lot of people who are uh, supporting him and uh, doing research on his life and so forth. But there's thousands of mothers who were wonderful holy mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters. Uh, those are the saints, those are the un unsung heroes that were recognized, people that you can look up to uh, within your life and saw how wonderful uh, uh, they were, what a wonderful life they had. So you, you look at them, and those are the ones we're talking about. So we want to emphasize on All Saints Day that there are a lot more saints in heaven than just the ones that are on the calendar, that those who are not on the calendar are just as holy in heaven but when you say just as holy, I compare a holiness to we got a gallon that's all full, we got a quart, a quart that's all full, we got a pint that's all full. So there are different levels of holiness, but all of them are full to the rim uh, with their capacity of grace and holiness. So will I be jealous of you because you've got a, a, a bigger cup of holiness? No, because I'll be uh, filled to the rim. So I, I can't uh, receive any more graces or holiness. Uh, but what we're talking about these, not the heavy hitters, not the superstars, saints, but the ordinary saints that you and I meet all the time. Uh, the mother who, who's taking care of, uh, the daughter's taking care of a uh, dementia mother. Uh, like the, uh, uh, a man told me a couple of days ago, he says, my wife's got dementia. Uh, but I'm going to stick, uh, I remember talking, and he was crying. He was crying. He says, I'm, I'm going to hang in there to take care of her as long as I can until she goes to heaven. Now, there's a saint, a guy who's given up his life to, to take care of a wife who's got dementia. 
So uh, we, what we, uh, the church is doing, trying to recognize the presence of, uh, uh, of saints right here, right now. Okay? Okay, Father. Thank you very much. Thanks for your call. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let's see. Okay, we don't have too much time left. And if somebody could give me the uh, breakdown, uh, especially when it comes to the last minute. But it's been a very interesting uh, show tonight. If there's anybody else out there who'd like to call and ask uh, a question or comment, give me a call at 860-321-7405. A lot of people wanted my telephone, uh, my cell phone, where they'd like to call me during the week. Like I just got a call just a little while ago, uh, just like I told you coming over here, where a girl was hit by a car and uh, her whole body is just ra ranked. And uh, when we look at uh, uh, her, your heart just goes out to you. Let's say, I think we have a call somewhere. Father Ed. Hi, Father. This is Don and Donna. How are you? Well, how's the dynamic duel? Okay. Oh, doing great. <laughs> hey, we loved your show, Father Tolton. What a fantastic. It, it's like it's off Broadway. It's just beautiful. The music was great. The lessons behind it were great. Very inspirational. Yes, yeah. uh, it's such an inspirational thing. And, and how devoted was that family to our Lord and Mother Mary? Yeah. What inspired you to get this movie? Uh, well, a long time ago, before you were born, <laughs> at, at an early age, uh, somebody had to feast uh, the feast, the show St. Faustina, which was done by uh, St. Luke Productions. And I went to see it, and I was so impressed. Uh, that was an excellent. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to try and bring uh, St. Faustina because I haven't had her myself. I went to see one that was sponsored by another parish. So I saw that and I said, gee, that's, that's tr a tr tremendous vocation program. So I started with uh, John Vianney. I, and then I got to, uh, I started with St. Teresa, the little flower. Oh, beautiful. And, and then I went to St. John Vianney. And then I went to Maximilian Colby. And now I came to uh, Father Tolton. All of them uh, were, uh, were really uh, great. And by the way, that's, I, I asked you to uh, give a commentary. Uh, just give me a, a short sentence. And let me just read to you what the kids from St. Rita's wrote to me. Oh. In inspiring performance, interesting, creative, clever how one actor can tell the story. Well done, fascinating, educational. I was shocked by the pressures even among the priests. We're going back to the... 1880s, and, and this one came from uh, Bishop Rosas, I, if I could find it here, uh, Tolton. I was deeply uh, touched by Father Tolton's profound uh, faith as he struggled against <coughs> so much opposition and per persevered, following God's will faithfully, Father Bish uh, Bishop Rosasa. And um, oh, that's nice. I got one from a lady. Thank you so much for sponsoring St. Luke's production of St. Augustine Tolton's Life. <coughs> First class entertainment with a religious theme. How refreshing. My husband and I attended the recent performance at Northwest Catholic School in West Hartford and were spellbound. It was gripping, inspiring, and honest in its depiction of a regrettable era of American's history. And she goes on. These are just some uh, uh, ideas. Here's one from a priest. I enjoy the Catholic show, Tolton Slave to Peace. It shows the power of a black mother and prayer uh, and yeah. of an Irish priest. And that's what uh, it really came across to me, the tremendous faith of that mother yeah. that really uh, he, he picked up. I mean, you just... He, <coughs> <coughs> I need a drink, not a martini, but a glass of water. <laughs> yeah, he picked it up. And uh, I have to, I hope you can send your comments, and I appreciate it, because I want to make a uh, collage of all these statements and use it as a professional uh, promotional bit, okay? I can't wait for the next series that you're going to have. Okay, God bless you, and thank you, and uh, uh, I'll see you soon, I hope, okay? Hey, have a great evening. Uh, Take care. Thank you, bye -bye. Father. And we're coming to the last minute. Uh, so what I'd like to do, if any of you are listening, uh, to take my telephone number, 860-335-2342. 860-335-2342. And if you have a, a question or you have a comment on the show, if you have a personal problem, 
or something that's making you uh, panicky. If you want that book, Starving Your Fears, call me at 860-335-2342. And I'd like to end it with a short prayer. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May Jesus bless you, and may God the Father bless you, may God the Son heal you, and may God the Holy Spirit help you and intercede for you. And may the blessings of mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.